when you've been training for a long time and you're desperate to like break through to the next level, it is very tempting to try to reinvent the wheel and to come up with some creative and oftentimes wacky shit. I remember going into the gym late at night with my buddies when we didn't want to be judged by anybody else for the silly stuff that we came up with when we we're trying to trick our bodies into gaining more size and strength. On one such occasion, we went to the gym because we had seen one of the gym bros who in hindsight wasn't really anything special, but at the time looked big as shit. So we were more than willing to just blindly copy whatever we saw him doing at the gym. We had seen this guy doing preacher curls with a towel wrapped around the bar, and his buddy was basically doing a tricep extension on the towel, and the guy was fighting the weight every inch of the way, where at the bottom, his buddy would release tension, allow him to curl back up and repeat. Now, we did this, and it was a shit show, my buddy weighed 400 pounds. He was putting all of his weight into the bar. I don't know how I didn't pop a bicep off, but I do know that after an entire workout with concentric only work, we spent the next four days unable to use our arms. We couldn't drive our car. We couldn't write our name. I mean, we could only sit there and laugh with our arms like dead, hanging like fucking pieces of sausages at our side at how effed up we were at this new thing that we tried. It was like we finally stumbled on something that actually worked. Of course, we overplayed our hand and we tried to do it nonstop for like the next three months with mixed results. But at the time, all we knew was that it really messed us up, caused a lot of soreness and was a lot of hard work. And at that time, we thought that that's really what training boiled down to. Now, as time went on and we got introduced to uh, more strength specific stuff, as we got into things that actually had more of a backing with the way that good coaches actually had their athletes train with things that actually were verified in research. We came to find out that this was eccentric overload and that it's actually a thing and it has a lot of really cool use cases. The big thing is just neurologically for strength. That's where it has a lot of application because we're so much stronger in the lowering phase. It's something like 80% stronger for lower body stuff and up to 160% stronger for the upper body. That means you can handle a shit ton more weight than you are normally used to. So for strength, the nervous system gets used to this increased weight. And in the same workout, you'll experience post-activation potentiation, which means your regular weights are going to feel much better, move much better. You can actually do more work. And in the long term, those neurological adaptations are going to equate to more force production. You'll be able to recruit more fibers, do so more quickly. So obviously heavy centric work seems to have an important role in developing specialized strength in kind of a skill context. Now in volume work, you can do things like tempo work where you're using the same weights, but just going slower on the way down. And that fosters control, uh, teaches you to be stronger, more resilient at weak points, the points along the lift where you're normally blasting through with a bunch of momentum. If you slow it down and maintain tension, you actually build the strength to have purchase and strength at that spot where you normally fail. For volume and hypertrophy stuff for smaller accessory movements, like the idiot curls that we were doing oh so long ago, there is actually a pretty compelling case for using this type of stuff to get smaller muscles to grow and to strengthen these smaller accessory lifts. Now, this is something that I've had success doing. I have done in the past, but it is a giant fucking pain in the ass to do because it requires a partner. And I don't feel like harassing strangers or my wife to like come in and try to push down on the barbell and like give the right amount of tension and release the right amount of tension. That's a mess. So it's something that most people don't really do regularly. Now there's another protocol I want to talk about. That's also strength related, neurologically related. That's accommodating resistance. At this point, you guys all know what that is bands and chains. Now this works by increasing the weight as you go through the range of motion, because if you just look at us like we're dumb machines, take our musculature away. If you're looking at us like levers and, and fulcrums and moment arms, generally you can say that more work is required at the bottom portion of the lift. Generally, that's how most lifts work out where we are mechanically disadvantaged. So more work has to be put out to start the weight. Then once we have momentum and once we're moving into mechanically stronger positions, we get stronger and stronger and stronger. So most rep work with straight weight means just hitting the gas at the start, and then we can kind of coast. We can put it on autopilot, and we get almost into this jogging pace. And the more reps you do, the more you'll find yourself doing this, intentionally moving slow to conserve energy and pace yourself for more reps. Great for capacity, maybe hypertrophy, 
great for getting a lot more work in over all these reps, not so great for each individual rep conditioning strength and power specifically. And that's a really important point. If you're trying to actually condition power production, if you're actually trying to get as much recruitment as possible on each rep, you're going to gas yourself out much faster. Accommodating resistance, putting bands or chains on the bar, great way to condition this. It teaches you to hit hard the whole way through. It exposes you to more weight at your strongest range of motion. And it also, it flattens out the strength curve because things are harder in the beginning. So now things are kind of hard along the entire way. And that's a very different uh, type of stress than straight weight. And the way that we don't normally use it where we should is with smaller movements, not necessarily with the big compounds, but with curls and raises and flies and, and unilateral work for our legs and things like that. And when you do use accommodating resistance that way, it lights you the hell up. If you follow Josh Bryant's stuff, Josh Bryant covers everything from the more formal ways of developing size and strength through like periodization and through evidence-based approaches. And he covers what like prisoners do when they have no equipment and nothing but time on their hands. One of the things that he has advocated for that some of the biggest motherfuckers he trains does is doing things like curls and tricep extensions with chains. And I've tried it. It is absolutely brutal. It builds up a level of fatigue that you likely haven't experienced in those muscles. And again, it allows you to handle a shit ton of weight at the top, thereby conditioning more strength in those muscles than they would get with your run of the mill skull crusher tricep press down. So I like it for that reason. Now, here's the thing, as much as eccentric overload is a pain in the ass to do with those movements, so is accommodating resistance. I mean, you can rig up a band or chains on the barbell or whatever, but I did like uh, front raises. I went through this big front raise phase when I was trying to increase my bag toss because I have very short arms. So that's a, that's a worse mechanical setup. I'm a worse trebuchet for flinging a bag up over my head. So I figured I needed my shoulders as strong and as powerful as possible to make up for that gap. So I was doing front raises with chains off a box. And I'd have the soft D handles from the cable set up attached to chains. I put up a box to get the height just right. And it worked. I mean, it lit me up. It was hard as shit, but it was hard to get it just right. The balance was all over the place. The chains kept falling off the box. It was kind of a mess to reproduce. It was hard to scale and keep track of how well I was doing with them. I did have a lot of success just standing on a mini band and wrapping it around a barbell and doing front raises that way. And I will say my front raise got strong as shit. I was doing front raises with over 200 pounds at one point. And a big part of that was the dedicated work I was doing with accommodating resistance. And if I do say so myself, my shoulders were popping and they were popping more than everything else because that's what I was doing for that muscle group. So in talking about how this was such a pain in the ass to set up, this brings us to the main topic today, which is the Speedians Gym Monster. Now, at first I thought this thing was a gimmick. Now, full disclosure, I'm not being paid for this. I'm not, this isn't a product review because I only review things if I've done it for a long time and had a lot of success. But I wanted to make this video and I was intrigued with this because this system had two features. For those of you who don't know, the Speedience is a magnetic resistance like smart cable setup. So there's a lot of these now. It's like smart home gyms that are supposed to be do it all. And I tried it out. I can see how this would actually work as kind of a complete home gym for somebody who isn't like a barbell fanatic and just wants to get some good quality resistance training in a very compact setup. I can see that. I was interested in it as an accessory machine, as something that's small, compact, and allows me to do a ton of shit in my home gym. So when I saw that it had an eccentric overload setting and a smart accommodating resistance setting, I was intrigued. And that's really the only reason I agreed to do this thing because I don't really have a use for stuff uh, outside of that. So we get this thing, we bust it out, and it's really cool the way it works. The only time I've seen this in a machine is at a corporate gym. I think it was a 24 hour fitness like 20 years ago. They had these really cool machines that were hydraulic based and you could actually push buttons on it to increase the amount of force on the eccentric or the concentric. And that was the only time I've seen those. They're not very popular. They're cumbersome to use. Most people don't know how to get a lot out of them. So it's no surprise that I haven't really seen them. I've actually looked for them to purchase to see if they had a few that I could you know, store in my gym back when I had one and I could just never find it. So this is like a revival of that. And it seems a little more modern, a little more tight, a little more well put together. So I try it out. Let me tell you, I was actually incredibly surprised by this thing. Again, they're not paying me a dollar to tell you guys if it's good or bad. 
I told them up front that I was going to be honest one way or another. I told them up front that I wasn't going to do a full product review. It was just going to be about this in particular. And they were fine with that. So this is my honest review. Laura has been doing this shit like every other day. She's been running through the the automatic classes that they have. So it features the same 1990s video game music. It walks you through the workout, shows you how to set up for each exercise, and it walks you through a workout. It clocks rest periods. I do the free lift. I've been watching her get through these 25 minute workouts. She's drenched in sweat. She's fucked up. She's been sore like this entire last week. I've been using it on free lift so I can actually make use of the eccentric overload and the accommodating resistance. I was actually incredibly surprised how easy it is to set up. Whatever weight you have set up on the bar or the individual handles, you can go up to 50% higher on the eccentric portion and its ability to like calculate where the top and where the bottom is and to change weight at the right time is very smooth. It, it was very surprising to me that it works that well. So I did a whole run of tricep work. I did a run of cable work. I did shoulder work. As of this time, I haven't done leg work, but I plan on doing things like single leg RDLs and Bulgarian split squats. It comes with a bench, so it's pretty easy to set this stuff up. It can actually be used as a magnetic rower as well. It comes with ski handle attachments. And I think for extra, you can buy a specialized bench to basically turn it into like a CrossFit rower. I hear it works pretty well, but it's not exactly the same, but I don't really care because I'm not using it for that. So these workouts are incredibly surprising. I've done probably half a dozen workouts on it after my main gym workouts. I do my barbell stuff in the morning and I'm doing this stuff in the afternoon and I've done a handful of tricep workouts. I've been spamming the tricep rope. I've been doing a lot of single arm stuff. I've been going back to front raises. I've been doing military presses with it. And one of the really cool things about it is I can do the, I can get so much more out of the tempo work because tempo work with straight weight is fucking boring. This kind of keeps you engaged. So I'm doing tempo, but it's under the increased eccentric. It's like a different type of hard, and it's been lighting me up. But one of the big use cases for accommodating resistance with this type of stuff, or doing like the chain setting, it's not just that it drives so much blood in and it burns and it fucks you up and it's hard to do. It's that it's easier on the joints. So like with a, a tricep movement, right here's where my elbow gets lit up but this is where the weight's the lightest and I can go through and as I get into a stronger, more comfortable position, that's where the load kicks up. So all that blood that pulls in, cause it's like pumping air into a bicycle tire. All of that blood that pumps in is really good for restoration and for strengthening joints. So a lot of good things I'm going to follow up later after I've done this for a couple months, but for right now, this is my feedback for the Speedians gym monster. It's a little pricey. It's on the order of three grand. But for a home gym, I mean, I know guys that would spend three grand just to have a run of the mill cable set up. Now this might not be as good or as heavy duty or as versatile as one of those bigger cable setups that you might be lucky and come across on an auction site. But the fact that it has some of these smart capabilities that you're not gonna find in any free weight setting. I mean, I can't think of another way to reproduce the eccentric overload or even to reproduce the accommodating resistance with the same ease that this affords. It's really cool, I'm really impressed. So yeah, I'm back to doing the silly shit I was doing when I was 17, when I was trying to, to get these little pea shooters to level up a couple sizes. So far, I really like what's going on. My joints feel great. I've been really sore after the workouts. So we'll see if I can scale this thing up high enough. So stay tuned, guys. So that's all I got for today. Leave questions, comments, concerns in the comments section, or better yet, take it to Patreon, where I upload my training and answer questions on a weekly basis. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Till next time, this is Bromley. I'll see you.